Hello everybody and welcome back to Madden 2002 in our Cowboys franchise mode. We are here towards the back half of our uh, schedule, the last three games of the season, uh, the first of which being this game today against the Seattle Seahawks out of the AFC. And if that's not gross enough, they're also playing at Husky Stadium, home of the Washington University Huskies football team, uh, which is where they are currently playing as the kingdom is getting destroyed and Lumen Field, as it's called now, is being constructed. So I think in both Madden 01 and 02, they play here at Husky Stadium. So I don't think you get a, a glimpse at the, their current home until Madden 2003. So, in general, this is a weird team because they get new uniforms with that new stadium as well. So, in these old games, you get you still get the classic uniforms, which I love, man. I love these uniforms so much. Uh, and they, they, they have some of the pieces of their current team. In this game, as a matter of fact, uh, Matt Hasselbeck is actually starting for the Seahawks in this game. Uh, I don't think he actually did start around this. I think in real life, he actually did end up starting. But I know in our Madden 03 franchise with the Cardinals, it was Trent Dilfer for, I think, the first, like, two seasons. I don't even know if Matt Hasselbeck ever saw the field. Um, but, of course, as we know in real life, Matt Hasselbeck was the career starter for the Seahawks for, what, probably a decade, I think? Before Russell Wilson, right? Uh, I don't know if there was a gray period between quarterbacks. There probably was, but uh, I can't remember who they were. But Matt Hasselbeck was uh, the starter who held it down for the Seahawks for so many years, uh, starting around this time. So, But uh, we have Tony Banks back, which is important here, but we do not have... Uh, or rather, I, 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 we're still without... I think we might actually be healthy, finally. Uh, but uh, I was just taken aback because we have Joey Galloway just absolutely cooking here. Remember, he got injured late in the last game, but he is fine. He is here with us. We still have Wiley in the backfield. Uh, we do not have Emmett Smith. I think he is healthy. We just haven't really put him back in because we're at the tail end of the season here. Just try to rest up some of our stars because we've had so many people injured. Uh, but with uh, the Quincy Carter thing kind of uh, working... I, I the, the the choice to go with Tony Banks here was strictly just because I was trying to win us some games here. I didn't want us to kind of keep faltering. Quincy Carter had struggled a lot in the games that we had seen him in. I think he had played more than enough here to maybe get some number increases, potentially. And so I'm going with Tony Banks here in the final three weeks of the season in some of these easier games against pretty bad opponents to see if we can squeak out some wins. And on a fourth and five, our drive stalls out. We're going to have to bring out Doug Ryan to knock this one through, who has not had a great season, mind you. I think I cut out... They show the stats every time he goes up, but I cut them out a lot of the time, and they're not great. I think his kicking percentage is in the 60s, man. It's not great. So, uh, but this Seahawks are going to get busy here, handing off to Waters, who's got some open space, and just outrunning our defense, getting to the sideline before he's finally brought down by about four Cowboys, who are all in pursuit on their horses, uh, and they finally caught up to Seattle's running back. And no, Sean Alexander is on this team. We will see him a little bit later in this game, but Waters is going to be their starter, so... The first quarter is going to come to a close. We hold a 3-0 lead over the 4-9 and nine Seahawks. As you can see, man, against bad teams like this, we have the Cardinals next week, so I'm just trying to squeeze some wins out. If Tony Banks is going to help us win, then uh, that's the uh, the personnel change I will make to try and get this offense rolling because we really have not seen a whole lot of offense in the last few videos, so we really need some of that. So Seahawks are going to stick with the run game, and why not? It has been working, but on that play, we snuff it out finally and silence the run game. So on third and five, you'd expect the Seahawks to go through the air, and they are. Pressure coming off the edge to Hasselback, but that one is guarded perfectly well by our secondary. I haven't said that too terribly much this season, but I uh, got to acknowledge when they do do it. So Lindell comes out to kick this one through. It is a long one, and his range is just not quite there. Lindell I think he's a rookie in this game. He doesn't have a picture. Uh, so, but but yeah, he, he lands in the turf. <laughs> he does not get to the upright. So 3-0 is still your score. Now we have an opportunity with two and a half minutes left to go in the first half to maybe get some points of our own. And Ragib Ishmael makes the catch and cuts up field and gets brought down right at about the sticks. Uh, to, 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 to extend our drive. And on second and inches, we're going to have to see if we can't get just past the line to gain here. And look at that ball, dude. It's on whatever. <laughs> whatever. This game has its own has its own method. But this play completely falls apart as the play action is snuffed out by Seattle's defense. They send a big man off of the edge, and he gets home to Tony Banks. So now we have third and seven coming out of the two-minute warning. This was a little bit more manageable, just a play go. And now we're looking at uh, a long attempt here. So Tony Banks stands in the backfield by himself and airmails this one to Ismail 
he was in double covered. I don't even know if he would have gotten it. So uh, we had to punt that one away. But Seattle couldn't do anything with the football, so we now have the ball again. Now with only 22 seconds left in the first half, Tony Banks going out to the far side, and he finds Derek May's open receiver who hauls this one in. Uh, and now we have some new life. <laughs> we have some life here. So with 18 seconds left to go, it's going to be a first and 10 for the Cowboys offense. Deep here, or not so deep here. We're about to, at about the 40, the Seahawks 40 here. And Joey Galloway hauls this one in, but he he is injured, so he gets injured here. I think I thought he was injured earlier, but I, I, I don't think so. But he's injured now. He's gone now, uh, and so we're just going to not really burn time. We had, to, we had to use the timeout for the injury timeout, uh, and so we're going to just bring out Doug Bryan in the field goal unit, and they're going to knock this one through and get us another three points. So 6 nothing is going to be your score after one half. So it feels like the offense is moving a little bit easier with Tony Banks, but we still aren't really seeing the points here, not really getting into the end zone, which is a huge issue. So uh, on first and 10, Seattle's going to go with the run game yet again. Again, I think that's a fullback dive, uh, and uh, that one doesn't really go much of anywhere. So on second and six now, deep in Cowboy territory, Housebacks can go for a pitch to Waters, and he gets absolutely gobbled up as he can't get to the outside edge and get around the corner to any open space. On third and two here, uh, sending a man in motion. What are the CFs going to try and dial up? Housebacks going to go with a delayed handoff, and this time Waters is able to avoid about one or two tackles and get past the line to gain. So the Seahawks drive will continue right after the uh, the little commercial break here to get into the fourth quarter. So at third and six, we have them stopped here, and they're going to go with a pitch played. There he is, Sean Alexander, the young Sean Alexander, who's going to get to the outside edge, and we're going to have a couple Cowboys in pursuit, but neither of them are going to be able to get to Sean Alexander, and he's going to get into the end zone. This one is a touchdown for Seattle. So just like that, all of our hard work throughout this game so far is now for naught, because we are now down 7-6. to six. We're going to have to dial up a two-minute drill just to get ahead in the lead again if we can. Tony Banks finds the back of running back Wiley on the, uh, on the edge. I'm surprised he got both feet down, but he did. So it's a first and 10 for us, but we fast forward to second and 10 now, and Tony Banks, another humongous deep play downfield to Derek Mays, who hauls that one in, and now we're going to try and run the hurry up. We have plenty of time. We need actually probably need to start being smart about time, because maybe we should play for the field goal, try to burn as much time as possible off the clock. Uh, I don't know what the timeout situation is for Seattle, but Tony Banks is going to go to the side again to find Derek Mays again, He's, who's going to haul that one in. And we're going to again go for the hurry up. Time is kind of burning away. We are now within a minute and a half left in this game. Seattle might need to start thinking about conserving time themselves. Tony Banks finds Ragib Ishmael, who has to come back and make that catch, but I think he should still have enough. Uh, it depends on how they spot him. So they spot him just a few inches short. So on third and inches, the timeout is called at a minute 20. We're going to go with the handoff now to Wiley, who gets gobbled up at the line of scrimmage, and he can't quite get there. So... Seattle now, I think, is probably going to conserve the time here because now with a minute 17, we're going to have to bring out Doug Bryan, who's going to kick the go-ahead field goal. So now 9-7 to seven is what we lead over the Seahawks, but they have a minute and 13 just to get in field goal range to walk this one off if they so choose. So that's a ton of power that we just gave to the Seahawks. Really needed to pick up that first down. Maybe even could have went for it, just kind of stake the game on that. I don't know. It's a lost season for both teams, so why not, right? But either way, Seattle's going to have a perfect opportunity to mount a game-winning drive, potentially, and they're already off to a great start as that one is a huge pickup by Jackson to get him close to about midfield so they're going to start running hurry up now as well even though again they I think have plenty of time and there's got to be timeouts between either either team here uh, to figure this one out but uh, they're going to go for the spike. So I guess Seattle probably doesn't have any timeouts left if Matt Hasselbeck feels he needs to spike it. So on second and 10, that one is nearly picked off. If we could just cup that ball, man, that game would be over, and we would get back to 500 uh, for the first time and probably ever this year. So and we probably wouldn't touch it again. So on third and 10 here, potentially down to the last couple options for Seattle, and it's a humongous pickup, and I think that one, oh, I thought it was Jackson, but it wasn't. But Seattle gets well within field goal range, and they're going to bring out Lindell. This one's still kind of long for Lindell, but he nails that one through no worries about that with four seconds left on the field that time would essentially expire off of the kickoff so Seattle's going to walk things off here 10 to 9 and they win this ball game get their fifth win on the year and we drop to six and eight so now the best record we could potentially have is eight and eight not like we're playing for 500 but 
you know, obviously. Just something to note. So that's a rough pill to swallow. Seattle outgains us here in the in the final drive of the game, but it's a pretty even game between both teams here. Third down percentage is also very even, uh, funny enough. Yeah, but look at that. Two trips to the red zone, two field goals, man. If either of those are a touchdown, this isn't really a game, unfortunately, but that is just kind of how things are. So Tony Banks doesn't have the best game. Uh, I mean, completion percentage is fine and the yardage is fine, but no touchdowns or anything. That's kind of what's holding him back. Uh, we did lose Joey Galloway in at this game, unfortunately. Derek Mays did step up as far as receiving goes, but still nothing too much to write home about on that front. So, and Doug Bryan had a monster game, which is nice, because like I said, his stats on the year aren't that great. So, when we come back here, we're doing down to the last couple games of the year. We have this game on the road to play the Cardinals, and then we play the 49ers to end our season. This is our last division game uh, against the Cardinals, just ever, <laughs> our last division game. So, hope to see you guys in the desert when we take on the Arizona Cardinals.